Our topic today is a very powerful topic. Our topic today is the Father Heart of God. Everybody say the Father Heart of God. The Father Heart of God. It's very important for us to know that God is a father and a good, good father to us. He desires to be our father. God is in love with me and you. I'll say it one more time. God is in love with you and I in ways that you cannot start to understand. I'll tell you this too. Many Christians, many believers have not come, in fact, I can almost say most, have not come to a revelation of the love that God has for us. The love that God has for you. And I'll tell you this, because we have not gotten this revelation, we have different ideas and perceptions about Father God. And because of the perceptions that we have of Father God, our receiving from him, our moving in power and destiny is hindered because of how we perceive God. I'll tell you this from this author that the God that you experience is the God that you perceive. The God that you experience is the God that you perceive. If I perceive in my heart that God is, is, is stingy with his blessings... Because the examples I have had in life about, from the people above me is stingy. Then when I come to God, my expectations is, is, is limited. So if God came with a thousand blessings and I came with a basket that could only take 20 because I believe he's stingy, I will only receive 20 blessings and it will confirm my belief that God is stingy. Am I talking to anybody? If I believe that God is hard, I am not going to expect any softness, any gentleness from God. And so when I move and I act, it will be with, a, with the ability, my only ability to receive will be hard. And I will say that is God. But then that is because that was my expectation. Am I talking to anybody? Do we get where we're going here? Now, now we're going to look in the word and see that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to reveal him to us. Jesus Christ came to take us to the Father, making us sons in close relationship with the Father. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So, through him means... Jesus Christ comes. We believe in him and he takes us to the Father. Very important. We're going to look in the Bible in a few minutes and see how much God desires that we be sons. Now, the issue is this, and I'll, and I'll speak really quickly. For all of us, believe it or not, our, our, our perception of God, of who he is, or of his love, of his character, is based on some experiences that we've had upon this earth. The, the, most, the, 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 the major thing that impacts our, 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 our concept of God actually is our earthly fathers. Did you know that? If you had an earthly father who you found it hard to communicate with, hard to embrace, you will believe that God is hard to communicate with. God is hard to embrace. If you have an earthly father that does not communicate with you, that does not, not, not just communicate with you, you are going to believe that God is not a communicator. That he is not eager to communicate with you. Let me tell you this. The reality is this. God is always trying to talk to you. In fact, he's speaking all the time. But if you believe that God does not want to talk to me, or is not talking right now, you're not going to hear anything. This morning, we're going to attempt, in fact, we are, by the grace of God, your heart to be yielded enough to hear this message. I know for sure that the Holy Spirit is eager, eager to touch all your hearts today. Eager to heal. 
It's the hurts that we experience in life that causes us to believe lies about Father God. Am I talking to anybody? Some experiences that we've had that indeed it was not God, but we say it was him, will cause us to believe a lie that God does not love us so much, God is not willing to give us what he's trying to give us, or God is not trying to get into the level of intimacy that he desires. I'll tell you this morning that God is in love with you. If I say in love with you, if God had a wallet, if he opened it, your picture would be in it. If there was a special tree, he would carve your name in it the way lovers do so that passerbys could come and see that I love her or him. Am I talking to anybody? Today, we're just going to look into the word and see all that God has said in terms of his love for us, in terms of, 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 of how he wants to, 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 to enter into great intimacy with us. The word of God says in Deuteronomy that if you draw near to me, this is God speaking, that if we draw near to him, what did he say he would do? He will draw near to us. That's powerful coming from God. Powerful. He says, I will neither leave you physically or forsake you emotionally. Many people don't know when, when God says, I will neither leave you nor forsake you. What he's saying is this. And, and, and let us start to put emphasis on the promises of God. Let's not take it lightly because we're used to the words. He says, I will neither leave you. It means physically, I will not move away from you. I will not forsake you. Means, that means emotionally, I will not abandon you. That's what he says. Where if there's anybody under the sound of my voice and you feel abandoned by God, that's a lie. It's a lie that you're believing from an experience that you had with a father, a father figure, an uncle, a pastor, even the church. Even the church. Churches have done a lot to draw people away from God. Am I talking to anybody? Today, we're going to attempt to cover four things this morning. One, we're going to attempt to receive a revelation of the Father heart of God. The Father heart of God is that this God that we call God Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth, okay, who spread out the heavens with his hands and laid the foundation of the earth with his own hands, of the world with his hands. This God, this God, we, he wants to call us son and he desires to be our father. And that today we will get a revelation of his heart because he has the heart of a father towards you. Say, say after me, God, Father God, has the heart of a father towards me. Not like my earthly father, not like any pastor, but as a perfect father in perfect love for me. I am not fatherless. I am not an orphan. Father God is always there for me. He's a perfect father to me. Perfect father to me. I want you to believe this. Two, we're going to receive and experience Father God's love. And I really pray that this, this morning, our hearts are yielded to his love, yielded to his word, just to receive him this morning. This is the, the most important thing that we could do this morning. Three, to be healed of the hurt and pain caused by those who were supposed to reveal the Father heart of God to us, but did not. Many of us are disappointed. Fathers have not been fathers. In fact, we have to teach this in church. As a parent, God expects you to express his love to your children. That through you, your children will have a glimpse of what his love could be like. Father God always wants to communicate with you. He wants to embrace you. He always wants to talk to you. He will never leave you. He wants to listen to you. He wants to be involved in what you're doing. He wants to speak love to you. And I'll tell you this. I had a father who never once said, I love you till he died. He, came for, he was an old school father. Hug? I doubt it if my father ever hugged me. But today, everybody calls me Huggy Bear. If the Holy Spirit can do this with me, 
he can do it with you too. You only have to have a heart that's open. The father will not hurt you. Maybe the father figure in this earth, he hurt you, he disappointed you, he abandoned you. But this God will not abandon you. He will not walk away from you. No matter where you drag him to, he will stay there with you. He will fight for you. He will, when you cry, he cries. When you laugh, he laughs. And he, he will never, never, ever forsake you. This God. So as we, push, as we press forward this morning, please let your hearts be yielded. Be yielded. Because I know this. I know this. The Holy Spirit is yearning so powerfully to touch you this morning. So I know that this message is powerful and it's for, for a lot of people under the sound of my voice. That whatever the hurt is, the pain is, his love is the, is the antidote, is the medicine that is going to heal your pain, that is going to heal the hurt, the medicine. The father wants you to be sons. He doesn't want you to be orphans. I'll tell you now, the issue is not whether the father loves you or not. I'll say it one more time. The issue is not whether Father God loves you or not. The Bible says that while you were still sinners, while you and I were still sinners, that Jesus Christ, he died for us. Oh yes, he died for us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. That the Father sent his only son, his only begotten son, to make us sons so that we would not perish in hell and come to him in heaven. There's just something about that that's got to touch us. And finally, we want to receive the truth from the Holy Spirit directly about every lie that we believed, that we believe about Father God because of the hurt, the disappointment, and pain we have experienced from our earthly fathers, from father figures, from pastors, from husbands, and from churches. You know, the Father's heart is this. The Father's heart is about his unconditional love for mankind, for all men, for, for everybody, that surpasses knowledge. If you look at Ephesians 3.19, it says, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That's a statement that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. His love for us, it, it goes beyond knowing. The Father's love for you and I, it's like it just goes beyond our ability to under, our comprehension. It just goes beyond that. You know, God desires to be your father. Say, God desires to be my father. Say from your heart that God desires to be my father. And I will open my heart to his love. I will receive the love of God this morning. And I will become a son of God. Walking in his spirit. In Jesus' name. Matthew 5, 44 and 45 says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. But 45 is where I'm actually going. It says that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. There's a desire that I want us to, to, to hear this right now, that there is a powerful desire that God wants us to be sons of, of our Father in heaven. You see, let me tell you this. As we pray at the end of this quick message, even if your father died, because sometimes our fathers did die when we were young, and, we, and really we cannot help but feel abandoned. It was not their fault. But we must know this. We have a father who can never die, who doesn't do death, who's never going to leave us for any reason. You know, and truly, there are some fathers who are around physically, physically, but they're not there emotionally. A few people might relate to that. And the truth is this. We have a father in heaven who has promised that he will not forsake you. He, will, he is in tuned to your emotions. You know, um, I've had a few hits in, in, in my life where, where I've had to just throw myself at the father. And truly, he was always there. Always there. Always there. Times when I thought, when I had no idea what I would do with my life. You know, I got to understand that there are times when it's like you're in a boxing ring and the blow hits you so hard 
that you can't stand, but you fall against the ropes. You don't look at the ropes before you fall. You just fall knowing it's there. And the ropes hold you up and you stand till you win that fight. That's how it felt when the doctors told me in Dallas that I was going to be on dialysis for the rest of my life. And that did happen. That's what happened when, before my eyes, mommy left. At some point in time, we are all going to get to a point that we have to know that no matter what happens to you, you have not been deserted. That God is a good father and he will never leave you. Romans 8, 16, 17 says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit and we are children of God. Everybody say, we are children of God. And we are children of God. And if children, then we then hears. The fact that you are you are here means that we have an inheritance. When we know that the God of this earth, of heaven and earth, has called us sons, and we have an inheritance in him through Christ Jesus. That is something that's very powerful. If like like we have to pray that God, that that may you give me a revelation of the inheritance that I have in you through Christ. It's a prayer that we have to pray, knowing fully that this God is a father. If we look at, at Galatians 4, 4 to 7, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. God has adopted you all as sons. Do you know what that means? You have been adopted as a son. He is a father. The heart of God is for you. Like, from this day on, let your expectations be that of a child whose father is besotted. It means whose father is madly in love with this child. You see, the love that God has for you, you do not have to work for it. There is, no, there is no effort for God's love. Because even when we did not know him, he loved us. The problem in the world today is an orphan spirit problem. It's a fatherlessness problem. It's a father hunger problem. When people feel dejected, they're in despair, they're untrusting, they're fearful, they're rebellious, they're in addiction. Whatever it is, it's a longing for a father. It cannot be cast out. It can only be healed. And it can only be healed by, by the love of God. Am I talking to anybody? There, there are, there, like, there's a whole bunch of things that we could feel in our hearts that truly, truly, when we get down to it, we find out that actually it is just that not having a father that's causing it. Seriously, insecurity, low self-esteem, violence, paranoia, anger, bitterness, self-hatred, suicidal thoughts, promiscuity, rebellion, confusion, restlessness, depression, addiction, compulsive behavior, despair. All of these things that has filled the world with sorrow and pain cannot be cast out. It can only be healed. And it can only be healed when we receive the Father's love. There is a... The effect of the Father's love is this. It's, one is fearlessness. When you know that you are loved by God Almighty, you will stop being afraid. Should I say that one more time? When you are sure and you believe that God is your father, even when you have no money, you will not be afraid. Even when you don't know how to get to the next point, you will not be afraid. Because you know that there is a God who knows the way, who loves you enough that he will fight for you to get to where you're going. You will stop being afraid. You will enter into rest. If you believe and you receive his love, and you start to walk as a child of God, a son of God, you become generous. Because you know that Father will provide. 
I've been told this. I will spend my last card like my deck is full. Which means when I'm spending my last 1,000, you will think I have millions in the bank. And the reason is this. The God who provided will continue to provide. My father is in the house and I cannot go hungry. He did not let me go hungry yesterday. So why all of a sudden I'm going to be afraid of hunger today? He did not allow you to fall in the past. So why are you afraid that you will fall today? The father in the house means that one, I have security. I am not afraid. I have provision. I have provision. So I am not a hoarder. The problem in Nigeria and the world today is that we are ruled by a bunch of orphans who can't get enough. The houses cannot be enough. The money cannot be enough. The women cannot be enough. Nothing can be enough. It's an insatiable hunger because there's no father at home. They own houses in Maitama, but they're fatherless and they're homeless. Am I talking to anybody? That's not our portion. And finally, when father is in the house, there's love in the house. When father is in the house, there's love in the house. You are able to love those that don't love you. Because the love that you're giving doesn't belong to you. And it did not come from them. Am I talking to anybody? Because the love comes from the father. And as long as my pipeline is connected to the father in sonship. Because I know I am a son and he's my father. So that pipeline is there. I know that my supply is coming. I know that the love is coming. I know his power, his resources are at my disposal. So when I deal with the world, I become a source. I can give love out till the, till, till the cows come home. I can give love out. I can be generous and I'm fearless. It says perfect love does what? It casts out fear. The father's perfect love in, to, towards me, it casts out the fear, the spirit of the enemy that's fighting against me. That's what it means. That perfect love, it casts out fear. So today, I want our hearts to be open. We're going to start to pray in a few minutes. I want our hearts to be open, open. So that indeed, as we pray, as we pray and we ask Father God to come and heal us, that there will be healing today. There is no reason why any one of us has to leave this place the same today. Fatherlessness is a choice. It's an intentional choice that people make. Because the issue is that it's never whether does God love me or not. Is God's love here or not? That is never the question. God's love is a standard fact. A truth that cannot be shaken. But the question is, are you going to receive the Father's love? Is your heart going to be yielded enough to receive the Father's love? Father God wants to touch you today. He wants to touch you in a way that will change you completely. It will be a change that will come from the inside and it will change. Your attitude will change because now you're looking at everything from, from the inside of God. You're looking at things differently because now there's a connection and that the hurt is healed. It is so, so important that God, to know that God desires to make you sons. He wants to be your father. And what is God saying today? In Matthew 3, 16, 17, this is talking about Jesus. He says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Everybody say after me, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let me tell you this. Father God declared this over our Lord Jesus Christ before Jesus Christ did one single miracle. Before Jesus Christ passed one single test, it was from here he was led into the wilderness and tempted for 40 days. But God had already declared upon him that this is my son whom I love, in whom I am well pleased. That is the father's heart towards you today. His heart towards you 
is, he's saying this to you right now, to you. He's saying, you are my beloved son. And son covers both male and female. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It's a love that he has released towards you that has nothing to do with your performance. It has nothing to do with any test that you've passed. It comes from his heart because that's why we are created. If only we could go back to the Garden of Eden and when he had, he had created Adam and Eve in the garden, he loved them, he blessed them, he spent time, he fellowshiped with them. With them. That's his desire. So this, this day, as we start to pray, as we start to speak, I want our hearts to be open. I want us yielded. That truly, let us know that truly, truly, this God is a father. And as a good father, our expectations must line up with that. There are too many times that we judge ourselves when God has not judged us. We put ourselves outside of his, of his, of his, of his zone because we have judged ourselves. You know, sometimes people do things and I'm asking them, you know, what kind of father do you think you have? That you think he would put you through this and this is his will. It is not your father's will that you hurt, that you are in pain. He's not trying to teach you any lesson through pain or suffering. He's not. If you're in pain or suffering, you know, it's not his will. It's not his will. Some people talk about process. You only need process when you need capacity. You could not have capacity and God still puts you through process. Does it make sense? Do you get it? Because sometimes there, there, there are schools of thought that, you know, God makes you suffer so you can learn a lesson. No, you got into the wilderness because of your ignorance. This word of God is, your, is God's first, first uh, choice to train you is this. If you enter the wilderness, you open the door and the enemy led you in. If you follow God, you will never be in the wilderness. God will not lead you there. Jesus Christ paid the price. He died for you. He, he passed the test for you. There's a, there's, a, there's a replacement where you've moved. Jesus took you out and he took your place. Am I talking to anybody? You are blessed in Jesus' name. This is my version of John 3.16. For Father God so loved every one of us that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in his son should not perish, but become a son as well and have everlasting life. Am I talking to anybody? Oh, yes. Romans 8, 31, 32 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, if God is for you and I, who can be against us? This is God who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This is the Father's heart. God allowed his son to die for you and I. He gave us his son. So when you start, you know, expecting little things from God, or you start expecting some punishment and pain from God, how are you thinking? The Father gave up his son for you. He gave up his son for you. What else will he not give? It's like, if I gave you my most valuable possession and I gave it to you freely and you didn't ask me for it, will I have a problem giving you the other things I own of less value? Is anybody listening to me? So when we approach the Father, you see, to me, don't approach the Father as a beggar. You're a son. You're a son. Stop asking him for things he's already given you. He says, Father, I know you've given me this and I receive it and I thank you. Give me the ability to manifest it. Give me the ability to receive it. It's a better prayer than just say, God, give it to me, please, please, please. If your child will walk around following you every day, begging you for stuff you're giving that child, you know, that could mess your mind up. Am I talking to anybody? So even our language as sons must be different. And, and this different language is more effective. No kidding. No kidding. Don't stop asking for what the Father has already given you. Am I talking to anybody? Father God loves you so much. He says, you know, call him Abba Father. It's like Galatians. You see, everybody say, Daddy, Daddy. Say, Daddy, Daddy. Let me tell you this. I had a problem initially calling God Daddy. Seriously. 
I mean, I didn't have a problem calling him father, but I had a problem initially calling him daddy because I wasn't a daddy, daddy kind of guy with my daddy. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? I mean, I, my father was like military, you know, it's like <laughs> military. Um, no love, it's orders, authoritative, you know? Um, so, so but, 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 but the Holy Spirit softened my heart. Abba, father. Abba is an endearing term for father. It's like daddy, daddy. Like papa. Abba, father. Everybody say papa. Say it like you're talking to God. Papa. Practice again. Papa. Daddy. Practice it because, because, because that's where he wants you at. Where, 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 where you say Abba, father. If you look at Galatians 4, 6, and because you are sons, say I am a son. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. That's where you're supposed to be. Abba, Father. Today, my focus is to talk to you about the Father heart of God. As we go forward into the weeks to come, we're going to talk about sonship, and we're surely going to talk about the orphan spirit. There are so many people that the Father has released sonship to them, released his love, but these people have not received it. And even though they're in the church, in the house, they're orphans. And it happens, even in the physical, in a church where there is a father who is loving, there are people in that church acting as orphans, not knowing how to receive the father's love because they've been scarred, because they've been hurt. Amen? None of us is fatherless. None of you is fatherless. We have a perfect Father God who has promised never to leave us physically or abandon us emotionally. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we are blessed. You know, the three things that affect our ability to be intimate, to, to be in intimate relationship with the Father is one, our relationship with our earthly Father. If our earthly Father cannot show us unconditional and sacrificial love, we will have a problem connecting with God. If for any reason that father figure abused us verbally, physically, sexually, in any kind of way, we are going to have a problem receiving Father God's love because we've been scarred and we are hurt. Am I talking to anybody? The things that we learn from church, yes, can disconnect us from God. Churches, many churches still teach that we are sinners and we know that the wages of sin is death disconnection from God. So th th there are some hymns that people sing that says, oh, I'm a wretched sinner. You are not a wretched sinner. Jesus Christ died for you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. If you are believing you are a sinner, you are, then you must believe that you are disconnected from God. You must believe that you have to do some works to connect back to God. Sons do not work to become sons. They simply receive their sonship. And that's what I'm praying will happen today. Amen. And finally, life's experiences. There are times where we have been exposed to some things or we've experienced some things that has told us that this God cannot love you this much, is not a good father because you experienced this thing. And we've believed that lying voice from hell. So in our hearts, we've downgraded our relationship to, 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 with God to that of a servant and a master. You are a son serving your father. I'll say it one more time. You are a son first, but then you're serving your father. You are not a slave serving God. You see, a child serving their father can say, Daddy, today I'm tired though. I, you know, I don't, I'm not fasting today. I'm not praying today or whatever, whatever it is. But I'm not guilty about it. I'm a son. I have a right. I have a privilege. If people knock long at my door, it's not my children. It's true. Am I talking to anybody? That's the relationship that God wants to call you into. You can just start the conversation right now. Father God, see how life is treating me. This doesn't look good. I'm your son. You know, I receive and I receive and I receive. And, and, and you speak it. And that's a powerful prayer. Just like that. You know, because you are sons. Amen? You are sons. You know, we are all expected to live lives that reveal Father God's heart to the others. You know, th this passage I read is John 14, 7 to 11. It says, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. 
Okay? And if you come down to 9, it says, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. That's powerful. And that's one thing. As, as I live my life, I try my best to be that. Jesus Christ was confident enough to say, is it possible that you have experienced me and known me and you're still trying to figure out what the Father looks like or is? He says, no. If you've known me, you've known the Father. But guess what? You can only get to the point of expressing the Father to others after you've received the Father as your Father. So today, as we get into prayer, we're going to receive him as our Father. We're going to receive him as our Father. And then we're going to be positioned to go forth and release him to the others and demonstrate him to the others. Are we ready to pray? I want us to close our eyes. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you come now. That you come this morning and touch the hearts of your children. Oh, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus we just, I just remove every hindrance to your receiving the Father's love this morning. Just, re just remove every hindrance completely to the flow of the Holy Spirit in this place. Just remove the hindrance in the name of Jesus. I cover you all with the blood of Jesus. Every single person, I cover you with the blood of Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Father God, I pray that you come this morning and touch every heart, and heal every hurt, and take away every pain. That every single person under the sound of my voice will know that you are a good, good father. A loving father, a powerful father, who loves them. That they are the apple of your eyes. That indeed, that you, 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 you are doting over them. That you are doting over them. That you are better than any earthly father or father figure or husband that they could ever have, that you are better, a million times, a million times better than any fatherly, earthly experience that they've ever had, that you would touch their hearts this morning, that they would cleave to you and hold on to you and receive your love, and that your love this morning will heal every single heart in this place. First thing I want to do is, in your mind of your eye right now, I want you to visualize Father God. I want you to try your best to see this Father God I've heard about. What does he look like? What's his environment like? Just visualize him. Visualize him. If you can't get a picture, at least get a sense or a feeling. Because sometimes some people are visual and you can see. Some people just have this feeling that, well, I get a sense that he's here. But that is okay. I want you to, to visualize yourself in relationship to him. Are you close to him? Are you far from him? Uh, is there anything between you and him? You know, is there communication with him? I want you now to just to just catch this picture of Father God. Oh, yes. You know, the picture of his throne, what does it look like? What's the distance between the two of you? How is this environment? And we're looking at the Father figures in our lives. And I want us to speak it out. If, there's, if there are things you want to say and you don't want your neighbor to hear, please feel free to go to some quiet part of the sanctuary and speak it out because today we want to break every hold of the enemy on your soul. I want you to repeat after me and then meditate on what I say and then pray it. I choose to forgive my earthly father for not being there for me as I needed. So if that was something that you relate to, you know, speak into it. Speak words about it. I'm just going to keep moving slowly. The ones that relate to you, catch it quickly, start to delve into it. I choose to forgive my earthly father for he left me alone by myself. I choose to forgive. Because the healing process starts when we forgive. So just start to say it with your mouth that I choose to forgive my father that deserted me. He deserted me emotionally. I choose to forgive him. I choose to forgive him. I choose to forgive my father. He died. He died, and he just was not there. And I've had to struggle. 
nobody to pay my fees. I've had to depend on relatives. I've had to depend on people who are not even my blood relatives. Oh, yes. But forgive him this morning. Forgive him this morning. Because that situation has caused some hurt. It has caused some pain. I choose to, to and, and even if there was no father, even if it's a mother or an uncle or a pastor or a husband that had control over your life and they did not love you unconditionally, this morning, bring up those situations in your mind and choose to forgive them. I choose to forgive them. I choose to forgive my father. I had to live in the worst parts of town. You know, I wasn't up to my mates because there was no father in the house to provide. I choose to forgive my father. I choose to forgive this person who abused me when they were supposed to love me. When the very person who was supposed to protect me became the, 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 the enemy, became the attacker. I choose to forgive. I want you to set yourselves free this morning. As you forgive, you are going to see that the Father will have the ability to come in with his love and heal you this morning. Oh yes, I choose to forgive my Father for abandoning me. Oh yes, some of us feel abandoned, like we're abandoned in different situations, different instances, abandoned. That I grew up on my own. I had to figure things out by myself. I did not have a, a father figure to be intimate with. To tell him about the situations that I was going through. I had to handle these situations by myself. I choose to forgive. Oh yes. Let your hearts be yielded to the point that you speak it out and you receive his love. You know, this is not about the people sitting beside you. It's about your heart. It's about your life. It's about the quality of life that you will live beyond this day. Please, 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 don't just let your heart be soft. Be yielded enough to speak these words out. It will help. I choose to forgive my earthly father for not communicating with me to the degree, to the extent that I needed. For not allowing me to be intimate. For anybody here who has, not, who has not been intimate with an earthly father, forgive them. Because right after this, we are going to accept the father's love. The perfect love that's going to be intimate with us. That's going to be embracing and loving. That's just going to be there. I choose to forgive my earthly father for not embracing me. For not hugging me. For not telling me that he loves me. I never heard the word, I love you from another man. A man who loved me unconditionally and fathered me enough to hug me, embrace me, and say, I love you. You know, just pray. Just, just keep forgiving. I choose to forgive my husband. Oh, yes. He's the very one that's supposed to protect me and encourage me. But he didn't. He ended up abusing me and discouraging me. I choose to forgive my husband. I choose to forgive my husband. He wasn't loyal. He wasn't faithful. But Father God, I know that you are faithful. I know that you are loyal. I choose to forgive my earthly father or my uncle or whoever has authority over my life, let your hearts not be hard. Just keep praying. There are many things I may not mention. I want you to mention it. Earthly father was domineering, abusive. Or he beat you unfairly. I want you to say, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. He hurt you. He cursed you. I choose to forgive. 
pastor treated you badly. The pastor hurt you. I want you to just, this morning, just choose to forgive. Just choose to forgive. I want just repeat after me. I choose to forgive. Repeat after me. I choose to forgive the father figure that hurts me. I choose to forgive the father figure who wasn't there when they were supposed to be there. I choose to forgive my earthly father for not representing my heavenly father to me. Just keep forgiving. Just keep forgiving. It's very powerful. Today we are tapping into the power of forgiveness. It's a time of healing. Let your minds go to all the situations that need to be touched this morning. Don't leave anyone, any situation behind. Just, just, just. And it's okay to be vulnerable before the Lord. I sense that a lot of people are trying not to be vulnerable. But it's okay. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's in our vulnerability that the Lord does his healing. We have a father that he will not leave you. He will not desert you. He will continually embrace you. His love for you is forevermore. As sons, we yearn for the Father's embrace. We yearn for his love. Every son, every single son, desires the Father to hold them, to whisper encouragement in their ears, to tell them it's going to be okay. We were wired for the Father's love. This morning, let's enter into forgiveness and let things go. Because it is when we let these things go that we're able to hold on to the Father's love. You know, there are situations that we may never have discussed with anybody that's still affecting our lives. Forgive them, male or female. Let it go. You may not know it, but that's why you came to church today. I so know in my spirit that the Father brought you here this day to receive his love. That you will know that he is God and that he is madly in love with you. That from this day, let your expectations of God and of life be that of a son that is loved by an amazing father in an amazing way. So if it doesn't look like love, it's not from your God, Father God, and it's not for you. You will reject it because the Father loves you. Forgive those people. After this day, let it be past. Let it be past. Let it be past. Forgive them completely completely let 
it go. Holy Spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that you come right now and that you touch every heart under the sound of my voice to soften their hearts, to make their hearts yielded, that they will let it go completely, completely, completely. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that every heart will receive your love, that you are a good father, that they would use your love to replace, they would, they would administer your love to the places of hurt. Wherever it is you are hurt, know that Father God was there. He did something about it. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. I'm speaking to somebody right now because you're thinking about a situation and you're saying, God, Father God, where were you in this situation? I am standing on the altar and I tell you with confidence that the Father was that Jesus was there and that he caused it not to get worse. It is because of him that you're here today. He preserved you. He kept you. Now, he desires to heal you completely. Father God wants to give you an identity. The love of God will give you identity. There's an identity that you have as a son loved by the Father that will cause you to think in a certain way, that will cause you to act in a certain way, that will cause you to, to, to speak and love in a certain way. The Father's love is unconditional, is sacrificial, is inexhaustible. It's, it, it just flows. Receive that love this morning. Receive the Father's love. In the name of Jesus, receive the Father's love. Receive the Father's love into every area of your life. Receive in a revelation. In Jesus' name, I release a spirit of revelation upon you. A revelation of the Father's love. That you need not be afraid. You will have enough. Your future is guaranteed. Your accommodation, your children will do well. They will all get married. They will all go to school. They will all graduate. You, they will all have children. You will be fruitful. Enter into a rest because you have received the Father's love. You are loved. He calls you beloved. You are loved. I want you to receive that love this morning. This morning. That just receive a joy that can only come from God. A joy in your heart that can only come from God. Just receive a peace. A peace in your soul. In your soul that can only come from God. Because Father God, as of this day, Father is back home. Father is back home. Open the doors of your heart. The word of God says, I knock at the door. If you open your, the door, I will come in. Right now, right now, the Father is knocking. He's with Jesus and he's knocking. And he says, open the door and I will come in. Father, God loves you too much than to barge in. Oh, yes. And you cannot mix perfect love with coercion. You have to open the door. You have a part to play. To say, Father God, come into my heart. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. I desire to live in intimacy with you. I believe your word that says, if I come near you, you will come near me. So today, I come near. And I come near. And I know you're drawing in. And you're drawing in. That's what your word says. Holy Spirit, come, fall upon your children. They're ready for you. Their hearts are open. They're receiving you now. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Spirit upon you all. His fire, his love, and the weight of his glory. Receive it now.
Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. There's no God like you. Repeat after me. I choose to receive the Father's unconditional and transforming love today. I believe that Father God loves me unconditionally. He loves me. I'm the apple of his eye. He loves me. He loves me. I believe that Father God gave his son, Jesus, for me. When Father God sees me, he sees his son, Jesus. I believe that Father God loves me as much as he loves his son, Jesus. I believe that Father God is saying to me that I am his beloved child in whom he is well pleased. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to put a picture of Father God in your mind. I want you to, to look at this second picture that you're looking at. And I can tell you confidently that for most of you, what you see now is not what you saw at the beginning, at the first. If that's true, can you just wave your hand? Yes. If truly you were faithful in the forgiving to touch every part, what the picture in your mind right now would be more intimate. The distance between you and Father God will have reduced. The size of his throne will have reduced. Because for most people, the first thing you see is a very big throne. And he's sitting on a very high throne. And you're little and you're far away. But right now, that throne has become like a chair. You're able to reach it. You're able to come close. For those of you who really, really forgave, right now you'll see yourselves sitting on his lap, your head on his chest, smiling. Perfect love. Cast out fear. For those who, for whatever reason, were not able to key into all the forgiveness and everything, it's something you can do on your own where you sincerely let it go. There is no offense that has more value or worth than the love of God. You can't have both. That's why the Bible says we have to forgive. You can't hold on to things on one side and have the love of God on the other side. You've got to release the offense to hold on to the love of God that makes you a son that, that secures that pipeline into heaven where the love does not cease, the supply is inex in, inexhaustible, and where the love is perfect. It's a place where the Lord desires for us all to be. It's the desire of the Father that all of us be sons in a place of peace, of confidence, in a position of rest as we take victory over the world. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit that has ministered to us this morning, that we would not grieve him, that we will not grieve the Holy Spirit, that we will do and act and speak in a way that will encourage him to just remain and continue to manifest stronger and stronger each and every day. 
I pray that the fire of God that's burning your hearts this morning will continue to burn forever, forever, till we gather before the Lord in heaven and our flames connect together with the flame that burns at the altar of God. God loves you very, very much. I want you all to carry the love of God in your hearts in a tangible way that people will see and people will know that you carry something, that you carry something, something valuable, something priceless. In Jesus' name we pray.